more chain rule practice, the first function is f of x equals to ax squared minus 3 raised to the 10th power. This is already one composition function. We have a square inside a 10th power and then we are subtracting another composition function. So this time we have a third power inside a sixth power. So we have to do one chain rule for each parenthesis. So f prime of x that is equals to, let's take care of the 10 power first. So we bring the 10 down and then whatever that is raised to the 10 minus one, which is the nine power. And then by chain rule, we have to take the derivative of the parenthesis. So which is a x squared minus three. And then we put this in the other parenthesis as well. And then minus, oh, in the given problem, I use a negative six, right? Okay then let's put the negative sign in there. So first we bring the negative six down and then whatever that is raised to the negative six minus one, which is negative seven. And then we multiply the derivative of the parenthesis. This is using the chain rule, which is x to the third minus x squared plus one. This is x to the third minus x squared plus one. All right, so the next step, we take care of the derivative. So we have f prime of x. So this is a 10 and then x, ax, ax squared minus three, nine power. And then this one, bring the two down, you have a 16, right? 16 x. And then the derivative of three is equals to zero. The minus minus negative six, that becomes a plus six, x to the third minus x squared plus one raised to the negative seven. And then I'll bring the three down. So we have three x squared, bring the two down. We have two x and then the derivative of one is equals to zero. And then I guess that's it. So for the first, uh, for the first piece, you can multiply the 10 and the 16. So if you want, your answer looks one step cleaner. So that is 160 x and then times a x squared minus three raised to the ninth power and then plus six and then the third power raised to the negative seven and then three x squared minus two x and then i will box this as my final answer all right so that's the first function so the next function let's take care of this one the one with an x minus one raised to the third power Okay, the next function is we have f of x equals to x minus one to the third power, and then you multiply five x plus two to the seventh power. So this is a product of two factors. So we already know that there is a product rule, but for each factor, so for example, the first one, you have a linear function x minus one inside a third power. In the second factor, you have another linear function, 5x plus 2 inside a seventh power. So that means within the product rule, you have a chain rule. So f prime of x. Oh, by the way, what is the product rule? So the product rule is, remember this, fg prime plus gf prime. All right, so fg prime. So that means we ignore the x minus 1 for now. And then take the derivative of g, so the derivative of the seventh power, you bring the seven down, and then five x plus two, seven minus one is six, and then by chain rule, you have to take the derivative of the linear function x five x plus two. So d dx, so that one I will just give you a signal. So d dx derivative five x plus two. I don't want to take the derivative right now because Otherwise, that means I'm trying to squeeze all the works in one line. And then for product rule, so that is a plus. So the plus goes right over here. And then GF prime. So this time we copy the second factor, 5x plus 2 raised to the seventh, and then take the derivative of the first factor. So we bring the 3 down, and then x minus 1 square by chain rule, we take the derivative of the linear function, x minus 1. Okay, let's go over what, what we just did. So this is f, and then this is g prime, and then this is g, and then this is f prime. But in, in the first g prime, we have a chain rule in the first g prime, and then in the f prime, we also have a chain rule, all right? And then the next step is you clean up the derivative. 
So f prime of x. So let's don't do the copy right now. We take the derivative. So this is a phi, right? So this gives me a phi, and then this gives me a one, and then we copy everything else. X minus one to the third, and then seven phi x plus two to the six times phi, and then the plus goes down, and then phi x plus two to the seven, and then times three. Times the x x minus one to the second power, and then we can multiply the seven and the five, right? So f prime of x that is equals to thirty five x minus one to the third power phi x plus two to the sixth power, and then plus phi x plus two to the seventh power, and then times x minus one square, and then this is my final answer. To the second function, and then you might ask me, hey, ah,、uh, since we have a third power, sixth power, seventh power, and second power, can we do some factors? The answer is yes, but I don't see the point of doing that, so I would take this as my final answer. And then what's the next one? The next one, ah,、uh, you don't need to rewind the video. I will write down the function for you. So the next one, let's pick a different color. The next one is f of x equals to X square minus six divided by x plus two, and then you raise the whole thing to the three over two power. Okay, so we have a fraction. So definitely there is a quotient rule. However, the entire fraction is raised to the three over two. So that means there is a chain. There is a chain rule in there as well. So what's the first step? The first step is you use simple power rule to bring down the three half. And then, using chain rule, you take the derivative of the fraction. When you take the derivative of the fraction, there is a quotient rule. So let's do it. F prime of x bring the three over two down, whatever that is, raised to the three over two minus one, which is one half. By chain rule, I have to multiply the function inside the parentheses, which is x square minus six divided by. X plus two. So since this is a fraction, then this piece is a quotient rule. But when you multiply the derivative of this piece, use the the reason is you use chain rule, because x square minus x divided divided by x plus two is a function. We have this function inside a three over two power. Okay, let's fill in the blanks. This is x square minus x divided by x plus two. At this point, the first piece is done. This piece is all done. You don't need to touch that anymore. Your job is use the quotient rule. So what was the quotient rule? Still remember this? So product rule is f g prime plus g f prime. Quotient rule is g f prime minus f g prime divided by g square. Still remember this? Let's do it. F prime of x that is equals to we copy the first piece. I know there's a lot of writing. You just have to be patient. X plus two raised to one half, and then for quotient rule we need a long fraction bar. Square the denominator first. X plus two to the second power, and then x plus two. Okay, so the derivative of the numerator was that equal to. That equals to two x, right? So that is just a two x because the derivative of six is zero, and then minus for the quotient rule, and then numerator x square minus six, the denominator, the derivative of x plus two, is just equals to one. Alrighty, then fully open up the top, and then we can write our final answer. So three over two. X square minus six divided by x plus two, one half, a long fraction bar, distribution. We have two x square plus four、uh, x, two x square plus four x. Remember what I said in the quotient rule. Sometimes you have so many terms to expand. Just be very careful. So two x square plus four x, and then minus x square plus six. Divided by x plus two. Don't forget the square. So the only thing I can do is two x square minus x, which is equals to x square. Okay, here is some small magic. Copy, paste. So I can avoid some copying. 
and then we have x plus 2 square. This is a x square plus 4x plus 6. There is no need to open up the one half power. All right. So there is no need to open up this and do any more simplification. So this is good enough. Whatever I have inside the box, that is perfect. There is no need to move on. So that's our third function. We have one more to go. So that function is a quotient rule as well. Let's do it. You don't need to rewind the video. I will write down the function for you. So we have f of x equals to 3x squared divided by x to the third minus 1. So if you just look at this, this is purely a quotient rule, right? But since I raised it to the fifth power, when you take the derivative of the denominator, there is a chain rule. So what's the quotient rule again? The quotient rule is gf prime minus fg prime divided by g squared. In case you don't remember what it is, this is quotient rule. Okay, so f prime of x. So you have to square the denominator first. So the denominator is a x to the third minus 1 raised to the fifth. So square that. I know that is raised to the 10th power, but if I just write a 10 in there and you drop the 10 down, when you go back to review your note, you might be wondering, how do I get the 10, right? So I will just write 5 and a 2. And then gf prime, so the g, we don't touch the denominator, so x to the third minus 1 raised to the fifth, and then the derivative of the numerator, which is 3x squared, so you bring the 2 down, that is equals to 6x. 2 minus 1 is 1, so bring the 2 down, 3 times 2 is 6, 2 minus 1 is first power, and then the minus for quotient rule, and then fg, so we write 3x squared, so when you take the derivative of g, there is a chain rule, right? So the g prime is right over here, so this is a chain rule. So for the chain rule, I can do this in, in a different color for you. So multiply, you bring the 5 down, and then whatever that is, raised to the 4th power, and then you take the derivative of the inner piece, which is x to the 3rd minus 1, so you put the x to the 3rd minus 1 in there. And then the next step, you just take the derivative. Okay, f prime, we have 6x, x to the third minus 1 to the fifth, and then minus, can we just do a 15, so 15x squared, and then x to the third minus 1 to the fourth power, and then the derivative, that is equals to 3x squared, right? So that is equals to 3x squared, and then derivative of 1 is 0. So this time, uh, I will just keep writing the 5 and the 2 uh, square bracket. Put the 2 outside, x to the 3rd minus 1 to the 5th. And then the one final step, I will just multiply the 15 and the 3, the x squared and the x squared. That's it. So multiply the 15 and the 3, you have a 45. Huh. How about this? copy, paste, okay, we just do the multiplication right here, so 15 times 3, that is equals to 45, okay, so 45, and then square times square, that gives me a fourth power, so change the 2 to a 4, so now I can completely erase the 3 and the square and the extra fraction bar, so that's it. That's the final answer, oh, if you want, you can uh, multiply the 5 and the 2, and then put a 10 in there. So this time, maybe I, I should do it. So change that. And then change the 5 to a 10. 5 times 2 is equals to 10. And then erase the left square bracket as well. So that looks clean. And then this is my final answer using quotient rule and the chain rule. All right, so that is the end of this video. If you think my instruction is helpful and clear, give me a like, share the video for me, click the subscribe button if you are new to the channel. I will catch you all in the next lesson. Signing out.